Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. In this segment, we get to continue on with our discussion of the accounting cycle with some more journal entries. I'm so excited. We're doing adjusting entries this time, which means we're already about halfway through the accounting cycle, not quite. So far, we've talked about what the cycle is. We've talked about the equations that are part of it and how they fit in. We've talked about identifying transactions, making basic journal entries, posting and using the, uh, the journal entry or the excuse me, not the journal entry, using the T-account equation or the account equation to get balances. And then we've talked about making a trial balance. At the very end of our last discussion, we talked about another one of our key concepts, talking about what adjusting entries are and why they're important. We also talked about correcting entries and how we can go back and maybe use a shortcut to fix a mistake instead of having to wade back through all of our old journal entries to find and correct an issue. Now that we've gone through those basics, talked about what a correcting entry is and how to do it, what an adjusting entry is, and the steps to it, now we get to do some adjusting entries. Let the fun begin. So, just as a quick review, here are steps to making adjusting entries. We're going to decide whether or not we need to make an entry. That's the first step. Second, we'll decide what accounts are affected. And remember, if you even think about cash, it's wrong. Cash is never involved. Third, we're going to decide whether the accounts need to be debited or credited. Fourth, we'll figure out how much. And fifth, a detailed description. Always detailed because we want to provide enough information that whoever comes after, and there will always be somebody who comes after with an adjusting entry. We want to make sure that that person coming after to review our work knows exactly what we did. So we're going to provide enough detail that they can replicate our equations. So with that, let's do an example of an adjusting entry. First example is purchasing a three-year life insurance policy. We paid $3,600 of it, and we bought it on May 1st of the current year. We want to make the necessary adjusting entry on 1231. So let's go through this step by step. Step number one, do we need to make an adjusting entry? We probably recorded the payment when we sent out a check at the beginning of May. Now that we're in December, we've used up some of that insurance that we've already paid. So that means we have to record the use of that insurance. And that means that we need to make a journal entry. So yes, we get to do a journal entry. Second, we decide what accounts are being affected. And that's going to depend. It's all going to depend on what that first entry was. So let's take a second and make that very first journal entry. And there are actually two options for this entry. The first is we could have debited prepaid insurance for $3,600 and credited cash. Purchased three years of insurance. And I better put a date on here. This is May 1st. The other option, and I'm going to change colors here. I could have put it all into insurance expense when I paid for it. Purchased three years of insurance. So when we get to step two of our adjusting entry, what we need to do first as part of this step is to look and see, now wait a minute, have I made an entry for this before? If so, what did I do? Now I need to make an adjustment. So in this case, you look at this prepaid insurance. We'll start with that one. If I look at my prepaid insurance, I put all of it into prepaid insurance. And now I've got to get some of it out. It's not all prepaid anymore. I've used some of it up. So let's see. That means that I need to get some out of prepaid insurance. So that's one of my accounts. And I've got to use, show that I've used it up. Well, that's an expense of some kind. So I'm going to use an insurance expense. Now, remember, no cash. That's good. There's no cash. This was an original entry, so it has cash in it. My proposal, using insurance expense and prepaid insurance, there's no cash there. There's also one income statement account, the expense, and one balance sheet account, the prepaid insurance. So I meet all of my rules. Next thing to the debits and the credits. Well, expenses normally have a debit balance. So I'm going to debit the insurance expense. Normally, prepaid insurance has a debit balance and I'm using some of it up, so I'm going to credit that account. So now I'm ready on 1231. I'm going to debit insurance expense and credit prepaid 
insurance. This is an adjusting entry for insurance. Now, at this point, we're kind of mixing up steps. I want a detailed description, that's step five. Step four is to come up with the number, but since I know I want the equation in my description anyway, I'm going to kind of combine steps four and five and do them all at once. So let's see, I paid $3,600 for three years of insurance. So three years times 12 months. So that's $100 a month. And I have used, let me see here, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So I have used eight months worth of insurance. Now don't laugh at the fingers, okay? If you're in a test or you're in front of somebody trying to make a decision, even if you've got your fingers down on your legs and you're counting through, it's much better to count on your fingers or you'll make a mistake. I actually enjoy watching my students take tests because most of them are counting their, on their fingers and I love it because I know it means they're being careful with the process. Eight months here. So I have used up $800 worth of this insurance and that's what I'm going to record up here. I'm going to use up 800 and take it out of my prepaid insurance. On the other side, I get to 1231, and the problem's a little bit different. In this case, I put all of it in the expense, and I'm looking at it now going, wait a minute, there's way too much in that expense. I'm going to pull some of it out. So I do need to make an adjusting entry because there's too much in my, ex in my insurance expense for this period. I've got to pull some out. Now the question is what accounts are going to be involved. Well, in this case, my expense is too high. I've got to drop it. Where will I put it? Prepaid insurance. So it's the exact same two accounts. Just now, we're going to flip the entry. So in this case, I'm going to put it into prepaid insurance and take it out of insurance expense. Still in adjusting entry for insurance. Our description stays the same. Again, we're going to do our calculation. Um, let's see, it's still $3,600. 3 times 12. So still $100 per month, but now I'm multiplying by the months I haven't used yet. Haven't used yet. So in this case, I'm going to take the 36 months total minus the 8 months I have used, since that 8 should be in the expense. I want to keep it there. And in this case, I'm going to credit the expense by $2,800. The question now becomes, well, which of these is right? Well, let's take a look. The best way to see that is to actually look at the T accounts. And I'm going to try to get all of this to fit on this page. I think I can fit it right here. So we're going to make some T accounts so we can keep track of this. So here's my prepaid insurance and here's my insurance expense here we'll flip them insurance expense I used first prepaid insurance second so let's see here so I started putting 3600 into prepaid insurance then down here I took 800 out and I put 800 in wow I just posted wasn't that fun Okay, you don't have to be excited. I'm going to be excited enough for everybody watching these things. I think this stuff is cool. So let's see now. Uh, 800, there's nothing else going on here, so my ending balance is 800. In prepaid insurance, I don't know that there was a beginning balance, so I'm not going to worry about that. 3,600 minus 800, 2,800. So that's what I end with in prepaid insurance. Now over here, I started with insurance expense, 3,600. Then down here, let's see, prepaid insurance, 2,800. And insurance expense, 2800 So let's see, this gives me 800 and 2800 And you'll notice, now that we've done that, that they end up exactly the same. So the question is, which of these is right? Technically, this way is right, technically. But in reality, it doesn't make a bit of difference. Because as long as you make the right adjusting entry at the end, they're going to come out exactly the same. So it really doesn't matter which one you do first. Let's take a look at another one. So in this case, on June 1st, 
we paid $10,000 for six months rent for a large warehouse. I'd like you to go ahead and pause the recording here and give this a try. Well, hopefully you came up with a very simple answer. It should look like this. We don't need one. Remember that step one of an adjusting entry is to decide whether or not you need one. Well, let's see. If I paid six months rent on June 1st, here I go with my fingers again, June, July, August, September, October, November, by the time I get to the year end, December 31, this is all done. So I've used all of this rent expense. Chances are when I paid for it, to keep things simple, I would have just put it in rent expense at the beginning. I wouldn't have even bothered with a prepaid rent because I knew by the time I get to year end, this will be done. I'll have used it all. So. In this case, no journal entries needed at all. Let's go ahead and pause here for a minute. Make sure you're comfortable with these before you go on to the next segment where we get to do a whole bunch more adjusting entries. See you then.